All right, what I'm doing is I'm scaling some feathers that I had, uh, well, drawn from real feathers, this exact size. What I would actually do is uh, have a Lakota uh, a friend who can own eagle feathers. I can't. Uh, eagle and hawk. And what I did was I traced the feathers and then made a head measurement, which is one head wide, one head deep. And since everything is measured in head measurements, um, I made that head measurement to go with the drawing of the feathers. Now, here's a head measurement here. And the head measurement on my warrior is three inches. This is using Printmaster Gold 18, which uh, you can actually order online. But anyway, I'm just taking the top corner. You don't want to go with the center because it'll distort the drawing. If you take it in the corner and, and reduce it, it keeps everything the same, same uh, proportions. And there I've almost got three inches. I'm sorry, I'm not showing you. I'm watching what I'm doing on the screen, but not on what a camera. So that's about three inches, and I'm just drawing the drawing down until it's uh, exactly three inches. That's three inches. That automatically scales the ruler here to uh, the scale of a three inch head. And also, automatically scales all the feathers, including this uh, large feather here. And then uh, it just go from there, and I can uh, print that out on a sheet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this. Now that I've got it saved, I don't need this big ruler anymore. So I just remove it off the page, and uh, I will print out this page a couple of times I'll print it. I'll print out the feathers and then I just print it out so now the eagle feathers are scaled to the size of the warrior so that uh, I don't make the feathers too big I don't make them too small I make them perfect proportion we go and that's the printmaster 18 that I was using so I use this drawing to make feathers and here they are in wax this one's a blank it hasn't really been worked on yet this one has been worked on and uh, this one I worked on and painted so uh, all I got to do is uh, work on these a little bit more and uh, put them on the, the warrior. So first things first, I need to uh, work on the face, clean it up from all the uh, headdress damage.
don't know what kind of hair I'm going to put on them. So that's why I'm going to uh, such a great extent on the, the neck, trying to get it to, to where it's structurally sound. A lot of people make the mistake of making this muscle here, this prominent muscle when you turn your head. They make a sharp uh, muscle. It's a rounded muscle, it's not sharp. And in fact, uh, neck muscles are the hardest things to do because, uh, well, they just are. Now skin's going to be smooth, but I use the uh, striations or the uh, grooves in the tool to give me form, and I can see if it's even. It's it's sort of like a uh, pen drawing uh, done in the 1800s. Uh, you can see the form uh, through the lines. You can see if it's uh, even or uneven. giving him a strong neck. Native Americans back in the 1800s were not muscle builders. So you can't overdo your muscle. So I'm not trying to overdo it here. You look at uh, pictures of Native Americans from that period, you have to be very careful what you're looking at because photographers often set up the people with uh, clothing they had in stock. I've seen uh, photographs of several Indians wearing the same headdress and same shirt and uh, it's because in the latter part of the 1800s, they didn't have a lot. They were very poor. Uh, they weren't uh, allowed to hunt buffalo anymore. and They were brought uh, white man's cattle to, uh, for them to kill on the uh, reservation for food. They didn't have the skins... Uh, Unless they went deer hunting or something like that. Sculpt his ear. Now 
Now for the younger person, an ear, the top of the ear would line up with the top of the uh, eyebrow. The older you get, the more your uh, earlobe drops. And he's not exactly young, so I'm just going to put it down just a little bit below the uh, bottom of the nose. But if it was a young warrior, his, no his ear would be, uh, the bottom of the lobe would be even with the uh, bottom of the uh, nose, and the top of the ear would be even with the top of the eyebrow. I put a little bul bulb down first. That's to give it structure behind the ear. It's probably gonna it's probably gonna be covered with hair, but you know what? Practice makes perfect, and so you just do it as if you were gonna have it out there all by itself, and he's gonna be bald headed. By the way, these tools that I'm using here are glyptic uh, tools I got at uh, SculptureDepot.net. Uh, they have a little Allen wrench uh, screw in it. You get, you can buy these head, these wire ends separate, and you just put them in, and you can uh, tighten them in. And they're perfect tools because they never wear out. If you want to change the wire instead of buying a brand new tool you just change the wire save a lot of money Take a brush that's been doused in some uh, lighter fluid. It has uh, a quality in the lighter fluid that melts the clay a little bit and gets rid of all the rough areas. The problem with it is if you do it, you're going to take a a while before it evaporates to where you can uh, continue working on the face or on that part because the uh, lighter fluid has a tendency to be 
leave a film behind, or it leaves it, you know, kind of a, I don't know what I'm, the word I'm trying to think, slick, and nothing sticks to it. And so, even though I'm still got the uh, other ear to do, I'm going to have to quit now, because I haven't got time to wait for it to dry, and come back and work on it fluid on this thing to smooth out the skin a little bit because he is going to have smooth skin and that's going to be the uh, the difference between the clothing and him is the smooth skin so everybody have a great night and see you next time give me a thumbs up and share my video and then check out my instructional dvds uh the link down below this video all right see you next time